Which brand makes the best minimalist leather sneaker? In this video, I'm gonna be doing an extremely detailed review on seven different sneaker brands and rate each out of 10 based on its comfort, its quality, and overall value. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tap all the scores and give you guys what I think is the best minimalist leather sneaker on the market today. So keep watching. Before I get started, I wanna give a shout out to Apothecary. Every single sock that I'm wearing in this video is from this brand. Apothecary was started by two industrial designers and sneaker heads. These socks are designed specifically for your sneakers with enhanced comfort and breathability. The triangle mesh on the top of the socks is their one of a kind proprietary knit technology called IsoWeave, which enhances breathability and aids for a better fit. These socks are extremely soft and comfortable and have instantly became my go-to socks whenever I go out. The earth tones are one of my favorite colorways, but they have so many different colors to choose from to match any sneaker that you own. They also offer limited edition designs and collaborations with other artists and personalities. So check out the website, they have so many different designs and colors to choose from, so I promise you won't be disappointed. The first shoe I have is from Birchberry, and they specialize in barefoot shoes. This is the Branford sneakers in the white colorway, and it retails for $120. The first thing I noticed are the elastic laces. I hate tying my shoelaces, so these elastic laces are a game changer for me. I can easily slip these on and off without ever worrying about my laces. It also makes the sneaker look more sleek without the bulky bunny ears dangling everywhere. This sneaker is made from full grain chrome tan cow leather. The texture is a soft tumble pebble leather that feels so supple. The thickness of the leather including the lining measures to 2.59 millimeters, which is surprisingly thick for a sneaker so you know this will last you longer than your average leather sneaker. The lining is made from pig skin chrome tan leather. The entire interior of the shoe is lined with this material. Pig skin leather is thinner than cow skin but the fibers are stronger so it'll hold up well against abrasion. The outsole is made of rubber with a herringbone pattern. Because this is a barefoot shoe, the outsole is thin so your feet will feel the ground more or connect it to the earth as they like to say. This also features zero drop heel which means the heel height is the same as the toe height so your heels are aligned with the balls of your feet. This will strengthen your foot muscles and allow for a more natural movement. The construction of this shoe is impressive. The outsole is both cemented and stitched to the upper which is awesome in terms of durability. Birchberry prides himself on flexible sneakers so everything on the sneaker including the outsole is flexible. The only thing that is not flexible is the heel. The heel has a reinforced counter that helps over pronation. This is when your ankles roll more than it should when you walk. But the insole features an ortholite foam that cushions the impact from walking and running. It also does a fantastic job in supporting your arch and heel by distributing your weight more evenly. The insole thickness measures to 2.29mm which is slightly on the thinner side. The tongue features the same full green leather with thick and soft foam padding that feels extremely comfortable. The ankle collar has the same padding to relieve stress on your feet. For the comfort and fit, I went true to size with a size 9. This is my first pair of wide toe box shoes and it is a liberating experience. With these sneakers on, my feet don't feel that pressure that I get from my regular sneakers. It's gonna be hard to go back to wearing anything else after wearing my Bramfords all day. The soft pebble leather upper feels extremely comfortable against my feet. The padding on the tongue and ankle collar makes a big difference in reducing pressure and making this a great sneaker to wear all day. The flexibility is much appreciated because I don't have to worry about a break-in period and I get more flexibility in my strides. The insole and outsole of the shoe is somewhat thin, so I do feel more of the ground with every step, but it's not to the point where it's uncomfortable. The look of white toe shoes may be something that you're not used to, but once you have it on, it's barely noticeable as it looks like a regular white sneaker. Overall, the brand for is comfortable, functional, and you can style it with just about any outfit. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it a 9. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the brand for 27 out of 30. We're off to a strong start. Let's see if the next one can top this. The next shoe I have is from a New Zealand based brand called Rod and Gun. This is the Sussex Street Sneaker in the Testa Di Moro colorway and it retails for $155. The sneaker comes with laces in two colors, one in brown and the other in cream. 
For the material, this is made from full grain chrome tan cowhide leather. Cowhide leather is an awesome material for sneakers because it's thicker and stronger so it can handle harsher conditions, which means it'll last longer than your average leather sneaker. The thickness of the leather, including the lining, measures to 2.25 millimeters, which is surprisingly thick for your sneakers, so that says a lot in terms of quality and durability. The best way I can describe the texture of the leather is it's soft, supple, but with a little bit of firmness to keep its structure. The lining is made from pig skin chrome tan leather. The entire interior of the shoe is lined with this material. Pig skin leather is thinner than cow skin, but the fibers are stronger so it'll hold up well against abrasion. The heel is made from pig suede. Suede is a great choice for the heel because it catches your heel more effectively so you don't slip and end up developing blisters. The tongue has the same cowhide leather with the rod and gun patch stitched on. It is slightly padded along with the ankle collar to relieve stress on your feet. The outsole is a sponge rubber cup sole. It is both cemented and stitched to the upper. As the outsole is molded, rod and gun adds a foamy agent that adds minute air bubbles through the rubber so when you walk, the bubbles compress with your weight. But when you lift your foot, the bubbles expand so it'll give you a small pop of energy that you'll end up expending less energy with each step. The insole is a molded polyurethane with a leather cover. Another cool feature that I haven't seen from any other brands is the insole board. The board has your signature comfort technology which is a layer of polyurethane, styrene, and rubber pellets boiled and molded into this cushion layer that adds to the overall amazing comfort. In terms of comfort and fit, I went with size 9 and it does fit true to size. The brown leather looks stunning. If you want to stand out during casual night outs, then this is a sneaker to do it with. The design is slightly less minimal than the other sneakers featured in this video with the leather panels, but it's not overly done where it looks like there's too much going on. The perforated holes on the toe and side combine features from an athletic sneaker into a casual everyday leather sneaker that makes it more functional by significantly improving breathability. Padded tongue and ankle collar makes a huge difference in reducing the stress around my feet. The toe box does fit a bit narrow at first, but I think over time the cowhide leather will get softer and mold to the shape of your feet, making these extremely comfortable. Overall, the Sussex Street sneaker is functional, stylish, and works well with so many different outfits. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it a 9. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9.5. That brings the total score for the Sussex Street sneaker 27.5 out of 30. The next sneaker I have is from Beckett Seminon. This is the Reed sneaker in the navy white colorway and it retails for $169. The upper is made from full grain calfskin leather. This is mainly veg tan but with some chrome tan traces. All their leather is sourced from gold rated tanneries in Italy which is the highest rating by the leather working group. Calfskin is a great material for a sneaker because it will hold its structure well but at the same time conform to the shape of your feet. The texture of this leather feels extremely smooth. The leather is conditioned with shea butter and carnival wax for its suppleness. Over time, the leather will develop a unique patina that represents you and how you wear your sneakers. The lining is made from a beautiful brown vaquetta leather. This type of leather is used commonly in luxury brands like Louis Vuitton. Vaquetta leather is an excellent material for lining because it is naturally temperature regulating, moisture absorbent, odor controlling, and breathable, so keep your feet fresh all day. The outsole is vulcanized rubber mixed with natural and recycled rubber. The bottom has a nice layered look that provides excellent traction and when you look at the sneaker on the side, you see a unique zigzag pattern that gives it texture and a nice contrast from the smooth leather upper. At the toe and heel, you have a reinforced layer of vulcanized rubber which is a nice addition because you're always kicking and bumping into things with your toe and heel so this extra layer will improve durability. The outsole is a cup sole where it is both cemented and lock stitched to the upper. With the lock stitching, you don't have to worry about the stitching unraveling. The insole is made from rubber with the same full grain vaquetta leather. The cushioning at the heel is firm but soft. This is a pretty standard insole but the vaquetta leather really puts them over the top in terms of functionality and durability. The tongue has the same full grain calfskin leather with the vaquetta leather lining. It is very lightly padded. There's more padding around the ankles that gives excellent support. 
The laces are wax cotton laces. Wax laces are a huge plus because it easily slides through eyelets, stay tied longer, and the wax coating helps prevent fraying, so it will last a lot longer than non-wax laces. But if you don't like the look of wax laces, they also provide you with non-wax laces. For the comfort and fit, I went true to size with the size 9. I've been wearing the Reed sneakers all day for the past 3 days, and I can confidently say that these are one of my favorite sneakers for the summer, and let me tell you why. First, the minimalist leather design is timeless and goes with every single one of my outfits. I love the navy accent on the heel and the brown leather lining to give it that pop of color. Second, the comfort is incredible. The leather upper is soft and supple so there is zero break in period. The leather line insoles mold to shape my feet so it feels like I'm walking on clouds. The padded ankle collars do a great job at relieving pressure. Wearing this on a hot day, the Vaqueta leather lining does an excellent job at controlling odor so my shoes don't stink up my whole house. Comfort, style, and functional, Becca Seminar Reed Sneakers has everything you are looking for in an affordable, high quality, minimal leather sneaker. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it a 9.5. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9.5. That brings the total score for the Reed Sneaker 28 out of 30, making this the highest rated sneaker so far. Let's see if the next one can top this. The next sneaker is from the house of LR&C's Good Man brand. This is their best selling edge low top sneaker in the white colorway and it retails for $228. This brand is co-founded by NFL quarterback Russell Wilson. It's B Corp certified. 84% of their summer collection is made from mindfully sourced materials. Also, your money goes to a good cause when you purchase from them because 3% of their profits after product cost goes to support youth programs across the US. The sneaker is made from full grain Italian Napa leather made in Italy. Like a beef tenderloin in the meat world, Napa leather is a prime cut of animal hide. It is one of my favorite types of leather because not only is it one of the softest leathers out there, but also the durability is top notch. The leather is rolled on the edges so you don't see any exposed cuts, which makes this sneaker look more luxurious. The interior is lined with the same Napa leather so you get that supple and soft leather rubbing against your feet. The tongue has the same full grain Napa leather with a calf leather lining. It is very lightly padded, there's more padding around the ankles that gives excellent support. The insole is lined with full grain calfskin leather. Calfskin is a great material for a sneaker because it holds its structure well, but at the same time, conforms to the shape of your feet. Looking at the insole board, it looks like the heel stack is joined together through nail tags. This is common in dress shoes and boots, but I've never seen this on a sneaker before. Most sneakers use glue. With the nail tags, you know that durability is going to be off the charts. This sneaker will definitely last you for years and years and years to come. The outsole is vulcanized rubber. You see a unique honeycomb pattern with their Good Man logo. At the toe and heel, you have a reinforced layer of vulcanized rubber, which is a great touch because you are always kicking and bumping into things with your toe and heel, so this extra layer will improve its durability. The outsole is a cup sole where it is both cemented and lock stitched to the upper, which is awesome in terms of durability. With the lock stitching, you don't have to worry about the stitching unraveling. The laces are 100% cotton wax. Wax laces are a huge plus because it can easily slide through eyelets, stay tied longer, and the wax coating helps prevent fraying so it will last a lot longer than non-wax laces. For the comfort and fit, I went down half the size to 8.5 as recommended and I'm glad I did. The sneaker softly slides on and fits like a glove. I've been wearing the Edge sneaker for the past week and these turn out to be my go-to sneakers for everything. From going to the grocery stores, work, hanging out with friends, the Edge is slowly becoming my favorite sneaker in my closet. I've never owned Napa leather sneakers before and man have I been missing out. The soft and supple Napa leather is a game changer in terms of comfort. The padded ankles and tongue add to the comfort as well. The leather line insoles mold to shape my feet so it feels like I'm walking on clouds. The rose gold accent on the tongue, eyelet, and heel adds a nice pop of color to this all white sneaker. Minimalism is all about creating things that are high quality and stand the test of time. The Edge sneaker is a perfect example of this. Sleek, comfortable, high quality, and most importantly, stylish. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it a 9.5. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the Edge Low Top 27.5 out of 30. The next sneaker I have is from New Republic. This is the Kurt sneaker in the white colorway and it retails for $90. Every one of their sneaker is hand stitched and made in small batches. This sneaker is made from 100% genuine action leather. Action leather is used commonly in athleisure sneakers. 
It is split leather that has been leveled into an even surface and then a polyurethane plastic foil is glued onto the surface. Because of the polyurethane foil, action leather is more water and wrinkle resistant than faux grain leather. The lining is micro suede made from 1% genuine split leather. The suede texture feels a lot like velvet, very smooth and soft. Micro suede is also wear resistant, stain proof and durable. At the heel, we have a different type of suede that is less smooth but more grippy. This is a great choice because it catches your heel more effectively so you don't slip and end up developing blisters. The tongue has the same 100% action leather with the micro suede lining. It is very lightly padded. There's more padding around the ankles that gives excellent support. The insole is a molded EVA foam with a tensile mesh top cover. EVA foam is a great material because it is lighter, softer, more flexible, and shock absorbing than rubber insoles. With the EVA foam, this leather sneaker will give you the same comfort as an athletic running shoe. Tensile is an excellent material for an insole lining because it is moisture wicking, reduces odor, and breathable so your feet will stay fresh and comfortable all day. The outsole is a molded rubber cupsole that has been glued and stitched to the upper, which makes it very durable. At the toe and heel, we have a reinforced layer of vulcanized rubber, which is a great touch because you're always kicking and bumping into things with your toe and heel, so this extra layer will improve its durability. I really like the wavy pattern. It provides good traction and also looks modern. The laces are your standard cotton laces. For the comfort and fit, I went true to size with a size 9. Right off the bat, this sneaker looks like a luxury Italian dress sneaker that sells for over $400 like Common Projects, but instead you'll be paying only $90 for the sneaker. This is hands down the widest sneaker I own. From the leather, laces, stitching, engraved logos, everything on this is white. The all white minimalist design is timeless and goes with every single one of my outfits. For the past week, I've been getting tons of compliments with this sneaker. The slim silhouette and low heel back makes the sneaker look refined and classy. With or without socks, the micro suede lining feels so soft. Softer than a faux grain leather lining. Durability wise, the shoes are holding up great for the week that I've been wearing them. I noticed that the leather creases less than other sneakers that are at the same price point like Stan Smith's. Ashen Leather has a reputation of scuffing easily, but the Kurt sneaker does a surprisingly great job at resisting scuffs. For under $100, Kurt may be the best budget leather sneaker on the market. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it an 8.5. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the Kurt 26.5 out of 30. The next sneaker I have is from Goro. Absolutely love the packaging. Comes with a yellow towel and high quality 100% cotton shoe bags. This is the Meller 2 sneaker in the white colorway and this is the most expensive pair retailing for $334. This sneaker is made from faux grain chrome tan Napa leather from a Shroto, which is a gold rated tannery. Like a beef tenderloin in the meat world, Napa leather is a prime cut of animal hide. It is one of my favorite types of leather because not only is it one of the softest leathers out there, but also the durability is top notch. The leather thickness is 1.4 millimeters, which is very thick, so that adds to the durability of the sneaker. The lining is made from faux grain soft calf leather with a thickness of 0.7 millimeters. Calf leather is a great material for a sneaker because it holds its structure well, but at the same time, conforms to the shape of your feet. At the heel, they use the same calf leather but reverse, so it has a suede texture. This catches your heel more effectively so your feet doesn't slip and end up developing blisters. The outsole is made from TPS 70 Shore A pitch sole. It has a double side stitch to the upper which increases water resistance. At the toe and the heel, you have a reinforced layer of TPS which is a great touch because you are always kicking and bumping into things with your toe and the heel, so this extra layer will improve its durability. The insole is made from molded rubber. Out of all the sneakers, this feels the most squishy and less on the firm side, but I love how it feels. The rubber is very thick which will give your feet a lot of comfort and support. Underneath the insole is a faux leather lasting board. I haven't seen a leather lasting board from any other sneakers featured in this video, which shows that no material was skimped out when it comes to the Meller 2. Besides the high quality materials, the construction is another aspect that really makes the sneakers stand out from the rest. The sneaker uses a Blake stitch construction between the upper and lasting board. Blake stitching is when the upper is rolled underneath the insole and the two parts are sewn together. This improves durability significantly and makes resoling easier. 
The tongue has the same faux gray Napa leather with a calf leather lining. With some light padding, the thickness measures to 3 millimeters. There's more padding around the ankles that gives excellent support. The laces are locally sourced wax cotton laces. Wax laces are a huge plus because they can easily slide through eyelets, stay tied longer, and the wax coating helps prevent fraying so it will last a lot longer than non-wax laces. For the comfort and fit, I went with the size 9 and the sneaker fits like a glove. I've been wearing the Meller 2 for 5 days now and I love everything about this sneaker. First, this sneaker is extremely stylish. I'm a big fan that Goral went with an off-white outsole. It gives it a subtle vintage look that goes great with every outfit. The full gray Napa leather and the calfskin lining is a game changer in terms of comfort. The padded ankles and tongue does a great job at relieving stress on my feet. The thick rubber insoles feel like I'm walking on pillows, and that leather lasting board gives me more flexibility than any other typical leather sneaker. Minimalism is about creating things that are high quality and stand the test of time. The Miller 2 sneaker is a prime example of this. At over $300, this sneaker is not cheap, but considering how many years the sneaker will last you, this is hands down well worth your money. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it a 9.5. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the Meller 2, 27.5 out of 30. The last sneaker is the ultra popular Reebok Club C85 Vintage. This is in the chalk blue colorway and retails for $90. This sneaker is made from faux grain leather. Every panel is made from the same faux grain leather, unlike Stan Smith and Air Force Ones that uses a mix of fake leather. Leather feels extremely soft and flexible. Thickness of the leather measures to 2.12 millimeters. The lining is a terry cloth fabric. If you never heard of terry cloth, then just think about your bath towels because that's basically the same thing. It's a woven fabric with long loops that can absorb large amounts of water for you guys with sweaty ass feet. The tongue has a fabric lining with the Club C85 stitched on. I don't think there's any padding in here, pretty much just a fabric on the front and then a terry cloth lining on the back to bring it together. Outsole is made of a high abrasion rubber, dots all around the sole that feels really grippy. This is a 3 quarter cup sole because on the medial side, it has a cutout that shows the EVA foam. Underneath the shoe, you have a crisscross pattern and a non-marking outsole, which means that the shoe won't scratch up your hardwood floors. The insole is a removable die cut EVA. The thickness of the insole measures 2.67 millimeters, which is average thickness for an insole. The insole has a fabric lining over it and it looks flat, so you don't expect it to provide much arch support for your feet. For the comfort and fit, I went with a size 9. The toe box does fit narrow, so you may have to go up half a size if you have wide feet. I went out walking around the city for about 3 hours and I can confidently say that there is zero break-in period with this leather. The leather is soft and supple and feels great right away. The sneaker sits below the ankle so you don't have to worry about it chafing your Achilles or ankles. The insole doesn't provide much support but the EVA does help add to the comfort. Vintage Style has come back with a vengeance and brought Reebok back from the dead. The Club C85 is a versatile sneaker that pairs well with any casual outfit. For over 40 years, this sneaker has not changed one bit and there's a good reason for that. The Reebok Club C85 is a timeless sneaker that will make you look stylish and clean. Time to give the sneaker a rating. For the comfort, I'll give it a 9. For the quality, I'll give it an 8. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the Club C26 out of 30. Now the moment that you've all been waiting for, which is the best Mimus leather sneaker? Tallying up all the scores, here are the final results. Mega Seminole Reed Sneaker is the winner with a total score of 28 out of 30. $169 is an awesome price point for calfskin and maqueta leather sneakers. Very comfortable, no break-in period needed, and it looks amazing. The next sneaker is Goodman Brand's Edge Low Top Sneaker with a final score of 27.5 out of 30. I'm a huge fan of Napa leather. Very high quality and the sneaker feels so soft and supple against my feet. The next sneaker is Rod and Gun Sussex Street Sneaker with a final score of 27.5 out of 30. The comfort technology and the insole board is what really makes the sneaker stand out along with the unique design that will take your outfit to another level. The next sneaker is the Goral Meller 2 Sneaker with a final score of 27.5 out of 30. The quality and construction of the sneaker is what really blew my mind. Hands down the highest quality sneaker that I've ever owned. The next sneaker is the Birchberry Branford Sneaker with a final score of 27 out of 30. This is the best Branford sneaker that I've ever tried on. Leather quality is fantastic and they really Really nail the design and construction. The next sneaker is the New Republic Curse Sneaker with a final score of 26.5 out of 30. What really impressed me is that the sneaker doesn't cuff or wrinkle as easily so stay looking fresh longer than your average white sneaker. Last we have the Reebok Club C85 with a final score of 26 out of 30. Timeless design and I can see why it's Reebok's bestseller for so many years. Let me know in the comments below if there's other sneaker brands that you recommend. 
As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.